Happy New Year's, everybody! Hope you're enjoying the New Year so far. I'm not sure if it's just me, but the year went by in the blink of an eye. Just watching the seasons change from autumn to winter. Surprisingly, we had snow on Christmas Day for the first time in a very long time. So that was a bit of a treat. For Christmas, we went over to Mom's for a delicious feast featuring the special ginger garlic crabs. Rather than turkey, this has become our annual traditional main dish. So let's get started. Introducing the very first ingredient, which is three very fresh Dungeness crabs. The hardest part of this dish is preparing the crabs, which is usually why we only ever make this on special occasions. My mom, on the other hand, has become such a professional at handling these because of years of experience. So the first thing she did was remove the main shell by pulling them apart from the body using some force. Careful not to get clawed by keeping your fingers away from the crab claws. Transfer the bodies into a basin or a large bowl with water. Trim off any hair you see as best as you can with a scissor. Then with a bit of patience, spend a good amount of time with the actual cleaning and washing. The easiest way to clean is by using a brush like so. Any kind of brush similar to this will work. Uh, brush each section to remove any visible and non-visible dirt. Basically, you're giving the crab a good full body exfoliation treatment, like at a Korean spa. Because oftentimes, there's a lot of sand, especially in the hidden areas. The last thing you want is tasting sand when you're trying to enjoy a meal. This may seem like it's a lot of work, but trust me when I say this will all be worth it. The next step is optional, cleaning the guts under running water. I know there's many recipes out there where these guts are saved for extra sauce and flavor, but for this particular recipe, we remove them entirely. So basically what you choose to do with these is completely up to your preference. Trim off the ends of each legs with a scissor, except the claws for obvious reasons, so they don't snip you. And because it's very difficult. And finally, the cleaning part is done. Now on to chopping. Using a cleaver is the best way to get the job done quickly. As for how to chop these, it's hard for me to describe, so I'll just let the next clips show you how it's done. After the chopping part is done, let's give them each a light bruise. The bruising will make it easier to get to the meat later once they're ready to eat. Just don't forget the claws. And now we're on to giving this a quick little marinade. Using 3 tablespoons of regular soy sauce, 2 and a half tablespoon of fish sauce, and one teaspoon of ground black pepper. And last but not least, three tablespoons of oyster sauce. Now mix this until the pieces are coated with all that good sauce. You can put that aside for now until they're ready to use. On medium heat, add about 2 to 3 tablespoons of oil. You'll most likely want to use a large wok for this. Then we added finely chopped garlic, ginger, and onion mix. We used 2 head of garlic, 3 large shallots, and about 3 thumb size ginger. These were all chopped up together with a chopper or processor for convenience. Saute these until soft, fragrant, and starting to stick together. Now go ahead and transfer in the marinated crabs. Cooking time for the crabs was about 20 to 25 minutes. Give a gentle mix as best as you can until the fried garlic, ginger, and shallots are evenly distributed. Cover with the lid for about 3 minutes and let the steam work its magic. And after 3 minutes, give it another gentle mix. It should be smelling amazing already at this point.
Next, let's add some liquid to get some sauce. In a small bowl, mix 2 tablespoons of cornstarch with approximately 1 cup of cold water. Using the same bowl, we added additional cup of water. At any point, if it looks way too thick or too dehydrated, feel free to add more water as you go. Next, let's add one tablespoon of mushroom seasoning. Alternatively, you can either use a half teaspoon of MSG or Knorr's chicken powder. Let's give this another good mix. The meat should be firm and flaky inside. The sauces should be a little thicker but still visibly bubbling at the bottom. And all that's left is to cover it up for a remainder of 5 minutes approximately. And when all that's done, this is what it looks like. There's no additional salt needed because of the combination of garlic, ginger, shallot, and the initial marinade. You can see the sauce sticking to each of the crab legs with just the right amount of sauce at the bottom to eat with rice. All that's left is transferring this to a large serving plate for everyone to enjoy. Here's a little peek at the other traditional Burmese dishes that were also served as part of this Christmas feast for a small size family. I was very happy that there was enough leftovers to take home for the next day because this was just way too good to eat in one evening. Mom also made another traditional dish called ngathalau, which is a special kind of fish called hilsa fish. This will be in the next recipe vlog video for anyone that's interested, so stay tuned. And with that, this concludes the end of the vlog. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope it was enjoyable to watch and have a wonderful rest of your day, your week, and hope it only gets better from here. Other than that, take good care of yourself and see you in the next video. Bye!